This is the Business Owners IT Podcast with Anthony Garish and Ryan Carter, where tomorrow's technology meets today's conversations. Hi, I'm Tony Garish. And I'm Ryan Carter, and this is the Business Owners IT Podcast. A a podcast where we discuss tips, tricks, and solutions for business owners involving all things tech. Well, last time we dove right into the weekly review, and we're going to review the weekly review because there's been some updates that have gone along the way. And before I throw it to you, Tony, for a lot of the uh, in-depth analysis, I would like to talk a little bit more about like the supply chain piece of this, the flow down. So, you know, I've talked to a few of our other clients that actually handle car dealers in other ways. They're not actual car dealerships themselves. They might do marketing for them or they might do service for them. And one thing that brought, got brought down on the marketing side of it is because of this, the car dealers may not have been able to sell as many cars. I know they're all great salesmen and they're going to do a great job. But they may not have been able to sell many cars, so the marketing piece of it, they won't get their as much in their fundage at the end of the month, which would hurt that supply chain a little bit. I didn't know if you had anything to add to that. Well, yeah. So today I actually talked to one of our car dealerships before we got into this to get some of the dates, the key dates. And one of the things they said was the CRM part of it didn't come up until today. So the CRM is the customer relationship management piece. It didn't work on Friday after the 4th of July, and it didn't work on uh, a Saturday, but it seems to be working this morning. So, you know, it's, it's you know, those people in the dealership, you know, they can't work. They, they, you know, the, they call it the, uh, I think it's the BDC, Business Development Center, um, and, you know, they can't call on potential customers that they get through their website, too. And so the website also gets all the information from CDK, so all the new cars coming in all of that stuff, um, you know, doesn't flow into their website. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it's it, it flows down to everybody. I mean, you can't order parts, you can't do anything. I mean, um, so it's it's been a disaster for car dealerships. And, uh, you know, obviously this stuff type of stuff is preventable. Yeah, and our hearts do go out to them because yeah. it, it's, it's hard. It, it's hard work. Yeah. So, I mean, initially, you know, the, the hack or the – CDK knew they had a problem on uh, 617, which was Tuesday night, and they started to shut stuff down. So the first time they were down, um, you know, they went down 618, 24, so that was a Wednesday. And, you know, and it's just 7 8, 20, 24, which is today that we're, we're doing this, is that they said that they're fully back online, you know, and it's a 20 days without your your system. You know, and I said to the the business owners today, you know, that we need to print out all those forms and have clean forms so that if this happens again, uh, we'll be prepared to uh, to do stuff manually. Some other things I found out, you know, is, you know, that I alluded to it last time, is there there's a VPN connecting all of them, right? And, you know, we, there's some belief that the, the attack actually happened through one of the VPNs, um, the always-on VPNs, which also leaves the dealership vulnerable. But, you know, they also got ransomed twice. They were restoring, and then, you know, they got back in. I talked about that last time. But since then, you know, we found also that the threat actors were actually calling the dealerships. So they're calling the dealerships pretending to be pretending to be CDK asking for access to their system. <laughs> and I read that today, and I said, wow. And, you know, and, you know it's my understanding also that CDK is going to pay the ransom um, which I, you know, I, I read as little as ten million, as much as fifty million, to uh, to get to decryptor, and then also to to uh, stop the data that they collected from leaking. So, you know, this is extortion. Not only did they stop them from working, but they took their data apparently. So that data has value, and what they do is they say, "Hey, Ryan, you don't pay it, then I'm just going to put all your data out there on the dark web and put it up for sale, and somebody's going to buy it." I mean, that stuff really happens. So um, it's, you know, it's bad for the dealerships, car dealerships. And, you know, it goes back to that, you know, software as a service. Everybody thinks that they're in the cloud and they're safe. I hear it all the time. I'm in the cloud. I'm safe. No, when you're in the cloud, all you are is your data on somebody else's computer. That's all it is. So it's not safe. And people need to get rid of that false sense of of security that, you know, that the secure, that the servers and infrastructure that your cloud data is on is safe yeah i mean what's the damage if all of it was sold on the dark web well that's the thing right so you know it it all gets sold on the dark web and um then you know you you have to pay you know there's 
the normal thing, right? You're going to have to get the credit monitoring stuff, right? And you're going to have, depending on what they got, you could have social security numbers. You could have all this person by identifiable information. Uh, you know, it's no telling what, you know, they got. They could have, you know, salaries of, of you know, top guys. They could, it's, it could have all kinds of damaging information, right, that's available to them. So, you know, nobody wants their personal information out there for sale um, to be used against you. Right. So we have a possibility here of maybe some leeches that found out about the CDK hack and they just started calling any dealership, pretending they're a CDK to get more information, which they could have gleaned information for other dealer management systems. Um, you know, as a managed service provider, what is something that we would talk to the dealerships about to help prevent giving out that information on a phone call? Well, yeah. So we hope that, you know, you know, we hope that people understand and that they do training because we do offer, uh, um, you know, cybersecurity training. But we would hope, that, you know, typically, you know, the, it goes back to the same, the old saying, right? The IRS is never going to call you. The FBI is never going to call you, right? Uh, uh, you know, there's they just don't do that. That's not their mode of communication. And CDK, you know, you had to be weary of it. Why would CDK call you? They have a channel, you know, you, usually they would you know, communicate through their salesman or through a channel that they know, right? These threat actors were just calling in, say, hey, you know, I'm like, I'm, hey, I'm CDK tech support. Can you let me in your computer? I want to check something, you know, and, you know, you got to be wary of those calls. You know, it's, it's, you know, Microsoft is another one. Microsoft is never going to call you. But day in and day out, we hear about these hacks where, you know, some guy picks up the phone. Hi, I'm from Microsoft. And, you know, I, you have a virus on your computer. I need to help you. Or hi, I'm from the IRS. Or, hi, I'm from the bank, and we see a problem with your bank account. Can I get into your computer? And then before you know it, you know, they have, you know, they have a persistent hold and, and gone. So it comes down to that same thing is you always have to be wary of who's on the other line. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's time in and time again you see it where, you know, people get sucked into conversations over the telephone, you know, so – yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, a so, lot of these hackers are lazy anyway. I mean, yeah. they're going to try the social engineering attack before they do anything. It's right. the easiest way to get into a system, gain someone's passwords, or, or, or just get anything from them, a few bucks, you know. They yep. they all think they're, you know, hackers, but it's usually pretty lazy stuff. You know, they're using yep. tools that we already know and all of that. So we just got to be mindful of those those social engineering attacks. Yep. And then it happens, right? So, you know, it's, a, it's easy prey. You have somebody that's down and out right because they can't work and they they just want to help and get it back up and next thing you know you're causing more problems so um yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff out on the internet about the cdk if you guys are interested just go search cdk ransomware and you, you'll see tons of content yep it'll be talked about a lot until the next one mm -hmm. unfortunately there will be a next one yeah and this is right after the fourth of july we're doing this it was pretty quiet you know i was like sitting at home wondering what's going to happen because there's been some 4th of July attacks. Yep, I was watching a lot on my phone, yeah. too. So nothing really big that i seen that happened on the 4th of July, but that's when attackers like to attack, you know, is, you know, right before a holiday when people are off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier. Yep. Much easier to attack, right? And, and, you know, when people are off, they don't have IT guys like us sitting there ready to tackle it. You know, it's everybody's on vacation. So sometimes they don't even know until they come in, you know. Yeah. A day after the holiday and say, oh, my God, everything's, you know, unusable. Yeah, for sure. So I want to bring up something from uh, our last podcast also that we talked about is, um, you know, the question to ask your IT people or your IT provider is how are you protecting us from your tools? Because we all know that our tools, you know, remote monitoring and management gets pretty in-depth into the system and, and we can do some pretty cool stuff with it. But it's also pretty scary what we can do. And I wanted to bring that back up to you, Tony, to, to say, you know, for the, you know, as a tip or a trick for the business owners, what, how, how should you formulate that question and what kind of answers are you looking for? Yeah. So, I mean, well, this is what I would say, and I don't care who your IT provider is or it, even your internal staff, you know, ask your internal staff what they're doing to protect your systems from their tools. And, you know, every IT person, right, every, every, uh, you know, tech you know, they have remote access one way or another. What are they doing to protect, you know, protect the tools from being used against them? You know, do you know? Do you have RDP open to the Internet? I mean, ask your internal staff, hey, do you have a direct connection to the Internet, uh, you know, with no other, 
VPN or, you know, I can just go on the internet, use remote desktop and get in. No two-factor authentication like Duo, nothing, no conditional access. You know, can you can somebody just RDP a remote desktop right into a computer? I mean, you need to ask your your IT guys these tough questions. You know, can my can your remote monitor and management software used be used to attack my systems? Yes or no? Can your you know your EDR be used to attack my systems? Hey, can Adobe with their all their updates they push out or um, any other software company, uh, QuickBooks, who pushes out updates, you know, how do we protect against that? What happens if they push out bad software? You know, w you know, how are you protecting against that? I mean, I could tell you what we do, right? You know, we use Threat Locker, but we also are now using these things called FIDO keys, right? That's another thing. I have one in my pocket, right? This little key. I mean, so you can't get into any of our software, right? or any of our tools unless you're on your computer and the tech has this key. So that just stops, you know, that stops um, attack. We're trying to stop, do all we can to stop attack from happening from our tools. And, you know, we implemented this, um, it's probably been three months now, right? And it keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you guys have to be vigilant, you know. And then, you know, you, you also, I mean, be tough. Don't, don't, don't take answers that are, you know, um, that are soft. They need to be able to tell you what they're doing to protect, you know, your, your systems from their tools. And if they can't, then it might be time to find somebody else or, or you know, make suggestions. Hey, I think you should, you know, look into, you know, for example, Threat Locker, which is, you know, application allow listing or, or something like that that, uh, you know, might, might seem to be a little uh, um, scary to implement because you think it's going to create a whole bunch of tickets. But I could tell you we got, you know, over 2,500 customers or endpoints on threat locker and it's not creating a lot of tickets for us yeah and other questions to ask is when was the last time you did an internal or external vulnerability scan on our network yeah. or yeah. just like tony had said you know to check if you can rdp to other computers that's remote desktop i mean it's just simple things you know to see if you can pop over and just sign in where are our passwords kept where are our admin passwords how do you protect our admin passwords you know just just the easy stuff there like our firewall can you only get to it from in you know from our network how do you log into our firewall can you get to it from the internet there's just so many questions out there that you can ask and those are just at least the basics to help you get along and then if you get a good feeling from the, those answers or if you feel like ooh, maybe I should reach out to someone else to see how they can help this person, you know, you know, protect our network and protect our data. Yep. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, and sometimes people might get defensive, right? So you, you, you don't allow that. Don't allow your IT guy or your, your, you know, a service provider to be arrogant to you. You know, just simply ask them, what are you doing to protect my network from your tools? That's a tough question. And they should be able to answer it. I know I can answer it, um, you know, in you know, we've always been security focused first, right? How do we protect ourselves? You know, we, Ryan and I both like our jobs. We don't want to lose our positions because, you know, we have bad hygiene when it comes to cybersecurity. So, you know, we're always one step ahead, um, you know. Or try to be, right? Or try to be, yeah. right? One step ahead in our internal stuff ahead of what we're giving our customers. Yeah, and it's, I mean, those are all good tips and tricks and ways we keep the hygiene good. Um, you know, Tony, I think this is a pretty good for our second podcast. Um, can't wait to do some more with you. Yep, so yep. so I'll let, go ahead and leave the closing to you. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Owners Podcast. We hope to see you next week. Thanks. Unique Computing Solutions. Your IT challenges solved.